What's up, guys? It's Jamal Brown here, world champion in Delaware. I hold the 242, uh, which is 110 kg class total record. I had the Delaware record, but someone came and took it. Uh, I'm going to get it back, though, one day uh, when I do my next pilot competition. But we are currently uh, training for the World Dell Championships. That's going to be in September. I believe it's September 2nd. So I've been doing a lot of conventional training, and I've been getting a lot of questions about how to wedge, how to slack pull, basically how to conventional Dell, like my thought process when I go into it. So I'm going to do my best to break it down today. Um, but like, I'm, like I said, I'm in the midst of training, so I'm going to... Do not take too much time to break things down, but if you guys have more in-depth questions, feel free to leave those in the comment. Um, I can make probably make future videos like kind of detailing more of those points. But right now, I'm just going to go over the gist of it, try to put it in as simple as I can, uh, give you some pros and cons, um, you know, the, the good thing to do and the bad thing to do, the ideal full placement, um, and just the little things along the way. So. Just like I said, I'm gonna do my best to break it down. It's not gonna be like a full tutorial, but hopefully you guys can take something away and learn something from today um, that you can apply to your deadlift. Um, like I said, the same thing that I do for conventional, I inherently do for sumo as well. So these tips translate over back. So feel free to you know digest this and use this to make you better. So hope you guys learned something today. About to get started. It's gonna be my third time trying these shoes. I think how to pronounce the name is. Avancas. These are going to be going live in like a month or so, or at the end of the month. I'm not sure, but if you want these, these are great Dello shoes. They're Vivos, also with like a regular shoe. Like the since it's like Vivos have like a rounded bottom in the back, and it makes it kind of hard to have like a stable like foot, as you can see. Like this is like flat, and when the Vivos they will roll just a little bit in the bottom. I wish I had them with me so I could kind of show y'all guys the difference. And these have cushion around the heel. So it's a little bit more comfortable as well. But it still has the wide toe ball. It's a great grip on bottom. And yeah, they're a great lifting shoe. So I'm going to be trying these again. Um, I, I think I'm supposed to get a code with these guys. So be on the lookout for that. I'll probably announce it either next video or on Instagram or something. So follow me there. But yeah, about to finish warming up and uh, get ready to develop, so. Well, I'm doing conventional today, but the same principles like way over to uh, sumo. So try to be here with me, be here. When it comes to pulling slack, the main thing is you want to be like pressing the ground away. Mostly, I, I tell people the deadlift is a leg press mostly. So learning to push the ground away like you're, like, you're, like you're doing a vertical jump. I can jump higher, but like you're doing a vertical jump with the bar in your hand. So you want to be applying pressure down. That way your body can go up. And to do that, you need to have a great like stability right here in your core. You need to learn how to brace. That way you can apply power in the right spot. Get your foot placement, whatever. Everyone limb looks a little bit different, so your hips may be higher or lower than the next person. Like my hips are, I feel like they're in a good spot. I feel like sometimes they're too high and sometimes they're too low and it gets, I get thrown for it. And if you don't know where to set your feet when it don't come to conventional, usually set them just right below you, like where, like right underneath your armpits, but not so to the point where it's like too close. Then you can't really move or not too far apart because now you have to widen your grip out because your hands and that's what made the range of motion that much longer. So the happy medium is like right underneath your body and underneath your armpit. So, or just a little bit in. And I like to turn my toes out a little bit. That way I can get proper like hip extension. If, if, if your toes are forward, it's, hot, it's hard to drive your hips through. So like I was saying, when it comes to your feet placement, like I said, right underneath your armpits or slightly in, I like, like I said, I like my toes pointed out slightly. That way I can get proper hip engagement and like glute engagement at the top of the lift and make sure lock out that much more efficient. When you like, when you can't, because the thing is, when you think about sumo, your toes are angled out so you can get good glute engagement at the top. So when you bring your feet in, why would you want to cut off your glutes? So it's just simple. Just set your feet and a slight turn of the, the toes and you have a better position already. 
and you'll be able to drive your hips through better at the top. Pulling the slack, basically, you want your arms as long as possible. You don't want to be restricting your movement by tightening your back or anything like this. Cause just think about this, like me trying to tighten my back, look at where my arms are. Now when I relax, long arms, and just like let everything be long as possible, that much more range of motion is like, it's like a two to three inch difference by just changing the way you like set. So the, the way you tighten your back is you want to just pull your pinkies into your body, like just squeeze it. So it's like, it's just squeeze. That's all you have to do. So by squeezing your pinkies into your body, it automatically like pushes the chest through. And since your arms are like straight up and straight down, like so they're vertical, your chest has like free range of motion to go through. And once you just squeeze your pinkies, it automatically lifts your chest up, but it keeps your back and everything, all of this compact. So when it comes to pulling slack, like I said, you want your arms as long as possible. And when you're setting your hips, you don't want them too low. Now, when you begin to pull, it's gonna pull you at four into a position that you're gonna be in regardless to move the weight. And you don't want them too high, because at that point, you just, it's all lower back and you know, you're gonna be dead after that. So, a happy medium is long arms, feet underneath you like I said, and set your hips right, like, I think it's like right above your elbow, so for most people. So you wanna, oof, you feel like you get that angle, it's like right above. And that's gonna be the most ideal position to be in, but Slack is basically, like I said, getting tension in your upper body and keeping everything tight while setting your hips. And the wedge comes into play with that because if you're as long as you can and you're setting them, your hips should basically just pry you right open. Like there should be no up and down movement. Your hips should, should only be going through the bar and you should be standing up. So again, When you wedge like wrong, it's usually like this. It's like a, it's like a two part movement or you may set them too high and it just be all back. And you wanna be able to get your legs underneath you and that way you can push yourself in position, not pull yourself there. So the delta is a push, not a pull. A lot of people all the time always think I'm like, I'm rounding my back, but in reality, I'm not. Like my upper back is like relaxed to the point where it may look like I'm rounded, but I have huge traps and like a big like upper back. So it may look like that, but I'm not really. Rounding your back is more like lumbar, it's like lower. So it's like middle and half. So like this is rounding your back. That's rounding your back. What I do, everything's relaxed, but I'm not to the point where I'm compromising my chest escape. My chest is still up and through. It just relaxes upper back. So that's how you keep your back neutral. You got the slide pull, you got like the proper position, you got the feet placement, the wedge. And when you put everything together, you can get uh, a better deadlift for you guys. So let's put, I'm put it all together for you. So, you know, feet placement, arms straight up and straight down just right outside your, your shin, that way your chest can go through. You know, grip, you know, break the bar. <laughs> Press the ground away. So to initiate the pull, like I said, you want to be pulling getting tension in the upper body while pushing the ground away. You don't want to be, you don't want to be pulling. You want to tension and push. Push. Cause I tell people all the time, you can leg press. Anyone can come to the gym and leg press a thousand pounds, but you can't come in the gym and row a thousand pounds. Like your row in your back is going to be much weaker than your, your quads, your glutes and your hamstrings combined. So. Learn to use your lower body, you have a better pull.
just did a set of five with 822 pounds, which is 372 and a half kg. I'm tired. That said, just beat my ass, but we got it done. Um, yeah. Hopefully you guys can take something away from this video. Just pick up one thing at least and use it for your training. Hopefully it makes you a better look. Hopefully it makes your day look better. So if it does help, let me know. If it doesn't, leave me something in the comment and I'll get to it. So hope you guys like this video. Please like, share, subscribe. Peace.